Now, the graduation address gives us the opportunity to hear from a distinguished member of our alumni community. And we're fortunate today to have that address be given by Mr. John Baston. Mr. Baston is the college principal of Keysborough College, a leading secondary college in the southeastern suburbs of Melbourne. The college prides itself of the core elements of respect, excellence and diversity. It's located in a highly multicultural area with more than half of the residents born overseas, in countries such as Vietnam, Cambodia, India, Sri Lanka and Sudan. Consequently, a high percentage of students have a language background other than English. Mr. Baston has held the position of principal since 2015 and prior to that appointment held a number of senior appointments in the education sector at both metropolitan and regional schools. Mr. Baston is passionate about educating young people and is a strong believer that secondary schools must provide a supportive and dynamic environment to allow students to develop their learning. He believes that students must be encouraged to succeed independently in our rapidly changing world and achieve their goals and ambitions. It gives me great pleasure in inviting Mr John Baston to deliver the graduation address. Deputy Chancellor, the Honourable Simon Crean, Deputy Vice Chancellor and Senior Vice President, Enterprise and Governance, Professor Ken Sloan, Dean of the Faculty of Education, Professor Viv Ellis, members of the faculty, ladies and gentlemen, and especially the new graduates, this is a great honour and also very humbling for me to deliver this address. Uh, twice before I've sat where you are now and listened to graduation addresses and always have been, have been found them very inspiring. I hope that you will hear something from me today that you will find helpful in your careers. When I told my principal team that I would be delivering this address, I asked them, if you were standing in front of a group of graduates, what, would you believe, what do you believe is the most important thing that you can share with them about teaching? What they responded, I've woven into various parts of this address. I believe the enthusiasm which, which, with which they responded highlights two of the very important strengths of teaching. There's a strong sense of collegiality, not just those you currently work with, but as you progress through your career, uh, also with those you have worked with. Secondly, you never stop learning from others. No matter how long you've been in any profession or the position you may have risen to, you can always draw on the knowledge of others. I thank my principal team for their wisdom. Just a, a little recap of my history. Uh, as was mentioned, I've sat here twice before, following, uh, following the completion of what was then the highest school certificate at Mount Waverley High School, I attended Monash University. It was a very different place then, located in the outer suburb of Clayton, and it was the only campus of Monash University. On the other side of Blackburn Road, where the Australian synchrotron is now, there was a drive-in cinema surrounded by lots of bushland, pretty much all the way to Springvale Road and beyond. Uh, in the first year of my science degree, uh, which was 1975, I did something which at that time was unprecedented and took an art subject, French, in addition to my science subjects. Now the idea of doing cross-discipline subjects is quite common. In 1980, I was admitted to a Bachelor of Science degree and in 1982 was awarded a Diploma in Education. My career began at Yulorn Technical School, a boys only school in East Gippsland. I have to admit at that, that, at that time I had to look it up, because, look up where it was because I had no idea. The two years I spent there were some of the most enjoyable times I've had and formed lifelong friendships to this day. I must say to you that if you have the chance to teach or to practice in rural or regional Victoria or any state for that matter, please take the opportunity. It's an amazing experience and you won't regret it. This was followed by a number of schools in the northern and eastern suburbs of Melbourne. In 2000, I was appointed as assistant principal at Croydon Secondary College, and in 2015, appointed to the position of college principal at Keysborough Secondary College. To this day, I get asked why I wanted to be a teacher. And I have to say, in all honesty, 
there was no compelling passion or family tradition uh, that uh, took me into teaching. There were no educators anywhere in my family. There still aren't. I've enjoyed school and some, tr uh, and some truly outstanding teachers. Uh, sorry, I enjoyed my time at school and had some truly outstanding teachers and had decided towards the end of my science degree it's something I'd like to try. I said to myself that I would keep doing it until I no longer enjoyed it or no longer felt that I was making a difference. Here I am nearly 40 years later still enjoying it and believing that I'm making a difference. I've never regretted it for one day. I do want to speak about my school for, uh, uh, for a moment. Uh, you did hear a little bit about it before. Um, you would have heard that we have, um, in my introduction, the, the, the diversity that we enjoy. At this stage, I think it's important you understand our vision too. Our vision commits us to raise the achievements of all of our students and enable them to achieve their personal best in intellectual, creative, sporting and social pursuits. They'll have a voice and they'll make a difference in their community and be able to achieve their ambitions. This is a fairly long vision statement by any standards, but it's no, there's nothing in there that we felt in good conscience we could leave out. We're a large school, very diverse population, not just in, uh, in culture, but in aspirations too. Every year we have a Ducks that uh, received an ATAR of 99 plus, but we equally value the students who have achieved the best in other ways, creative, sporting and social, because they're equally successful and need to be recognised as such. What this means is that success has many different meanings for our students and their families, and it will in the communities in which you work and in which you practice. For any students you teach, it's important you understand what success means to them. Me. For the, second, uh, for the uh, next part of this address, I'd like to refer back to the statement I made previously about making a difference. I'd like to expand on it now. Schools are based on relationships, relationships with students, with colleagues and with the community. Most aspects of teaching can be learned, but relationships must be developed. All of us have gone through schooling and had a number of favourite teachers. What made them favourite teachers more often was the nature of the relationship you had with them. A positive relationship between student and teacher is difficult to set up, but improving student relations with you will, uh, will have constructive, positive and long-lasting impl implications for students' academic and social developments. First and foremost, as a teacher, you think about how you can make a difference in the classroom. I remember when my children were at school. I used to drive them crazy by asking them at the end of the school day, how were you smarter now than when you left here this morning? Sometimes I would just get a groan in reply. But more often than not, it would be an anecdote about a learning experience they had had, not just a fact or piece of information, but a description of how they learned or how the teacher got them to engage with the learning. So how do you build this relationship? First step is to believe that positive, building positive relations with students is paramount to impactful teaching and that students know that you have this belief. All students have strengths and it's a teacher's job to recognise in every student, no matter how challenging their behaviour may be, you must aim to harness these strengths. Assume every, child, sorry, every student has something to contribute and knows something that you don't. You'll have classes that don't work well, have challenges with students, uh, but keep believing in yourself and seek out experienced teachers for guidance. Your ability to make a difference to the students is not just limited to the schools in which you teach. You can have a profound effect on the careers of the students where you went to school. If at the end of my tenure of princi uh, as principal of Keysborough College, I'm to be asked what is the most impactful decision I made as a principal I'm positive it will be my decision to create the Keysborough College Alumni Association. The decision arose from a growing awareness of the need to provide aspirational role models to our students who they could relate to. We had for many years had many eminent and knowledgeable guest speakers at formal events. However, their connection with the school often came and went with that event. The feedback from our students was very clear. The knowledge these speakers imparted was very valuable, but our students could not see themselves as that person or in that role. We began a process of seeking out ex-students to perform this function at events and in a timely occurrence joined a pilot program developed by Our School Limited, 
a not-for-profit organisation that works with secondary schools to deliver their alumni programme. At this stage, I must acknowledge the expertise and support provided by us, our school. We now have a thriving alumni association with a database containing hundreds of ex-students, a list that grows daily and contains professions from every, every walk of life, everything from AFL footballers to brain surgeons to rocket scientists. We have them all. Alumni panels are an integral part of the career education of our students receive. They provide the students with work experience placements and employment opportunities. But without a doubt, the greatest value of the program is that our students can look at the alumni speakers and realise that this person was once a student of Keysborough College, just like they are now. The reason I want to relate to you this is I believe that it is imperative that no matter what the stage of your career you are at, that you maintain a connection with your secondary school, and if you haven't got that connection, re-establish it. You are exceptional role models to any student wishing to complete a tertiary qualification, as you have done so under the most challenging conditions possible. Your story will be inspirational to them now and into the future. However, you should not just be an alumni of your secondary school, maintain your links with Monash University. I'd like you to take a look around uh, take a moment to look around at your fellow graduates. Some of them they, you may know, but some of them, uh, many of them you won't. One thing is certain though, throughout your career, some of these fellow graduates will come into and out of your professional lives and you will always have in common the experience you have had in, in gaining your qualification today. The ex expectations of the community towards education is never static. In fact, I believe that considering the fast-changing nature of the world in which we live, technology, politics, social standards and accountability, every graduating class in education moves into a world in which the expectations of the community is in some ways different to the previous year. This makes your common experience even more unique. In closing, I'd like, you to, I'd like to state something uh, that you probably be, are very, very aware of. Teaching education, and education in general is a very rewarding profession, it can also be very demanding. I read somewhere that uh, a typical educator makes about 1,500 decisions a day. Um, as you juggle Dipria's roles of manager, content holder, master communicator, support system, and occasionally entertainer. You must be aware of your own well-being. Know when to switch off the teacher in you and when to stop thinking about work. I hope that um, your careers provide you with a lifetime of enjoyment, as it has for me, and, uh, as, uh, as I, uh, and I urge you to remember, in this fast-changing world, the responsibility is upon us, all of us, more than ever, as ever has been before, to continue learning and growing. I'd like to finish with one of my favourite quotes from the American author Seth Godin. Remember not to wait for someone to give you a map for the rest of your life. The world rewards those who draw maps, not those who follow them. I hope you create a future you are completely passionate about. You certainly deserve it. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, John, and congratulations to your leadership at Keysborough. Um, I think it is a great example of a large school over two campuses, interesting. So as the university has developed its campuses, so too is um, the secondary uh, schools in this area. It's an important message, I think, to you as you go into, some of you, into these careers. I think two messages, one that um, learning never stops and secondly that you've got to connect with the students that you teach, understand their strengths and develop them. It's an essential task in, in ensuring that we bring out the best in them and we look forward to you as graduates that are going to move into this field through your careers to become the leaders and to strengthen that development.